Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this video is going to cover reactive intermediates. So before we get into the nature of reactive intermediates and their stabilities, let's talk a little bit about where they come from because so far most of what we've discussed has dealt with uh, potential energy surfaces that involve only a single step. So let's spend a little more time talking about the intricacies of reactions um, and potential energy surfaces. So Reactions are, can proceed through single steps. So for instance, A plus B goes directly to C. And we've seen this before. So this is something that you should be somewhat familiar with from the previous videos. This is known as a a concerted reaction because it happens in one step with one transition state. Now, the other option is a more complex scenario, and this is oftentimes what we see in a lot of chemistry. So you're going to A plus B, something happens to A, it turns into a new species. Um, And this we can indicate on a potential energy surface that has A plus B. Then you turn A into some excited state or new species, intermediate. So this is a multi-step or stepwise reaction. has greater than one transition state. So in this case, we have two different transition states. The one leading from A plus B to A star plus B, and then the one leading from A star plus B to C. So this species here is known as an intermediate. So it doesn't exist for a long period of time, but it is a species that exists on the potential energy surface. All right, so there are different classes of reactive intermediates. We generally consider these anything that has like a carbon that does not have four bonds or has less than an octet of electrons or is potentially just highly strained. Like you'll notice that the intermediates are higher in energy than the starting material or the product. So are generally the three classes of systems that we are going to consider right now Are carbocations. Right. So remember, a carbocation has an empty p orbital. The second we'll consider is radicals. So radicals have a p 
orbital with one electron. So they are very, um, they very much behave like cations in a lot of ways, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And the final one is carbanions. Right, so a carbanion has a lone pair on the carbon. Um, And that's not necessarily then a p orbital. Uh, that's going to be more of an sp3 type orbital for that lone pair. All right, so those are the three classes. Hopefully, you guys are somewhat familiar with those from looking at resonance structures. Um, we're going to spend most of our time in the remainder of this course talking about these two. So let's talk a little bit more about the stability of carbocations and um, and radicals. So it's important to note that cation stability and radical stability trend in the same direction, so you're going to see similar trends for both. So let's start by talking about stability of carbocations. Things that can influence the stability of carbocations. The first one resonance. So if you can resonate the positive charge across different carbons to share the, the lack of electron density Right, so should spread the positive charge over different atoms, that will increase the stability of that uh, system. The second one is alkyl substituents. We'll leave that there for right now. Uh, so We're going to draw out the trend and then I will explain it. So if we look at stability of carbocations, we're going to see where R is some alkyl group. The following trend the more alkyl groups on or around the carbon with the carbocation. The carbon that is a carbocation. The more stabilized that carbocation will be. All right. So Carbocation that is completely surrounded by alkyl groups is going to be a much happier carbocation than the one that has no alkyl groups. Right? So it's going to be actually very hard to make a methyl carbocation. Whereas if you make a carbocation out of a tertiary carbon, uh, you're, you're going to have a much easier time of that. Right? So we hopefully understand resonance. Let's talk about why. Why do we observe this trend? Why is something that has alkyl groups surrounding it more stable than the system that has just hydrogens? Well, to explain this trend, we are going to invoke Hyperconjugation. So, what hyperconjugation is, it's 
for the most part, is sharing of electron density through sigma bonds. Remember that a bond contains electron density from the sh sharing of two electrons through two atoms. Right? So if we look at a carbocation, So this is our carbocation here, empty p orbital. Our adjacent alkyl group, let's say it's a methyl. We'll sit like this. So each of these contains a sigma bond with two electrons, right? It's two electron sigma bond. Now this sigma bond can share electron density when it's aligned with the empty p orbital. So the sigma CH can donate some of its electron density into that empty p orbital, making this empty p orbital, this carbocation, slightly more electron rich. All right? Now it's not resonance, it's not going to fully take that positive charge, it's just going to take a small amount of it, just, just a little bit. But even taking that little bit of the positive charge by sharing some of its electron density will make that carbocation much happier. Now this doesn't work so you'll notice up here that our methyl carbocation is very unhappy, very un like not very stabilized. The reason for this is because we don't have the proper alignment, right? So it does contain bonds to the carbon, but notice that the bonds that we're interested in are the carbon-hydrogen bonds that are one carbon away from the carbocation. Now the bonds here are perpendicular to the pi system so they can't align with it. Perpendicular So they're not able to share electron density. So that carbon has to keep all of that positive charge to itself. Whereas if it has adjacent alkyl groups, they can share. Now, we've shown one example of this here, but keep in mind that our trend shows that the more alkyl groups we have, the more stabilized the carbocation is. And this is because if we think about hyperconjugation, it doesn't have to happen with one hydrogen at a time. Right, so you can share from here. You can also share from all of the adjacent carbons, any CH or CC bond. You could actually also consider doing this with another carbon here. So really any Any adjacent carbon-hydrogen or carbon-carbon bond can donate electron density into that positive charge. So why just these two? Why not a carbon-oxygen bond? Well, consider the electronegativities of carbon and hydrogen. Right? Carbon 
a carbon-carbon bond, electron density is shared evenly. They've got enough electron density in, that, in the center of that system to share it with something. Same with hydrogen. Whereas the more electronegative atoms are less likely to want to give up that electron density to the positively charged carbon. Right? So this works specifically very well with carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. And this is hyperconjugation. It's the sigma bonding orbital donating into the empty p orbital. Right? So this explains the trends that we see in carbocations. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the trends that we see in carbocation stability also apply to radicals. So we can look at radical stability dictated one by resonance. So here, remember when we're dealing with radicals, we talked about this in homolytic cleavage. We're dealing with one electron, so we're taking one electron out of the pi bond to form a new bond here, and then giving that other one to the terminal carbon to form that. But again, we're sharing that electron deficiency because we only have one electron in that orbital. We're sharing that electron deficiency with the other carbon. right? And then there's also um, still going to be uh, alkyl substituent or hyperconjugative stabilization. Now this doesn't occur to the same magnitude as it does with carbocations because the radical is not completely electron deficient, right? There is some electron density, there's one electron in that orbital, but it does still happen in the same general trend. And I'm just gonna you can fill in the dots, but same trend. Same reason. Okay. So radicals and cations both are stabilized by resonance and hyperconjugation or electron donation from electron density donated from adjacent sigma bonds. Right, so that takes care of our reactive intermediates, uh, introduces you to the term hyperconjugation, which is just a sharing of electrons. Um, and these will all become important in both radical chemistry, which we will start next, and in substitution and elimination chemistry, which will come next week. So please keep these trends in mind and understand the way that we rationalize the trends that we observe.